What's up guys? I'm going to be talking about patch 8.9. I'm also going to be talking about um, getting back into League a little bit. So for those of you that don't know, I haven't really been playing League. Um, I've been working on other stuff, but I'm getting back into it now. going to be trying to play roughly five hours a day. Um, so that's, you know, five, six, seven games maybe. And right now my main account, uh, you know, after experimenting with all the patches and finding out what I like, finding out what I think is good, it's currently, you know, like D4, D3 somewhere. -ish. It's like middle D4. So within the, I guess, coming months, I hope to, uh, my intention is to get it up and then get it to higher ELO, get it to where I think it should be. Um, so look forward to some content on that. I have another video it's going to be coming out real soon, but this video is on patch 8.9. So getting into it, made changes. Mages have two mana states, pre-mana purchase, blah, 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 blah. Um, let's see, Dorn's Ring. Dorn's Ring no longer gives base mana regen. Now gives five mana regen per five. Now gives plus five damage versus minions. So I'm going to preface it with the idea that Plus five on hit damage versus minions isn't that crucial. One, because um, this only matters in the early game, right? And five damage on hit early game matters for shove, but most shoves are pretty much solved, right? Like, you know Talia's going to shove in um, most matchups. You just know that. You know that uh, Fizz can't really shove that much, right? So the matchup is the thing that depends on how the shove occurs, not really the Dorn's Ring. Plus it's non-unique, right? If you know one side builds Dorn's Ring, the other side can also build Dorn's Ring. So it, it's not really, this doesn't really do anything except help you hit under turtle a little bit. In that small micro instance where one auto doesn't kill, you know, a backline uh, minion under turret, things like this. Fact that it's not five per five, that's like one man a second compared to uh, base mana regen. So let's say, like, if I look up well, Ari, for example, right? What's Ari's base mana regen? Ari's base mana regen is 8 per 5, right? So if this is 8 per 5, a man over 5 seconds, then this is going to be less, right? So this is just going to hurt overall. Um, but they solve for this a little bit later on. No longer returns mana on main kills. This is a big issue. Um, pretty much Jordan's Ring is going to be a worse buy overall. It looks like. Lost chapter. AP up 15. Amp, Sapphire, Amp. 80 from Amp, Sapphire, 315. So it's going to cost more, but it's also going to include the second Amp, which is bad. Like, you don't really build Lost Chapter for AP, right? The 15 AP is nice. Maybe you'll be able to hit some clear thresholds, um, clearing backline, clearing frontline. But in general, this is worse because it costs more. You don't really build this for the sake of killing people, you know? Tier, tier price up, mana refund cost down. When you gain max mana from tier passive, it preserves your percent current mana rather than granting the full max mana. So this in general is going to hurt tier users. Obviously, the main tier users are mid laners and Ezreal. Um, the fact that the cost increases just means that um, certain strats like the way Rise shoves in to try and base with the Sapphire Crystal isn't as viable. So you need to find some new shoving methods. Like instead of a, a four-way shove or a three-way shove, you need a five-way shove. Um, strat, things like this. So you're more susceptible to ganks, you have to think about your war timing. So it kind of hurts like the rise cheese. Um, it also hurts the Ezra initial base, things like this. Um, and overall it shouldn't hurt too much. The mana cost is actually pretty significant. Um, this means that Ezreal's lane phase is going to be marginally worse. This means that mid laner lane phase is going to be marginally worse. Uh, which is fine because you shouldn't be winning those lanes in the first place since you built here and the other person probably built um, aggressive stats like long swords or amp tome, dark seal, things like this. Hextech is getting, GLP is getting buffs all over the board. Cost down, mana up, missile speed up, slow duration up. Um, basically, GLP is going to be better. Um, champions that build GLP. Um, are going to get a little bit better. So like the Tilia, for example, is going to have a little bit of uh, more potency, a little more potential. Um, overall, GLP hasn't picked on enough champions, so I'd like to see more champions pick this up. That'd be good. Finish Codex 
AP up, okay. Twin Shadows, AP up, okay. Seekers, cost down, all right. Spellbinder, cost up, gold up, AP up. This is a big increase. Like, the AP is down, but the, you basically build Spellbinder for move speed, right? So Spellbinder move speed is going to increase, which is pretty important for those mid-game picks. You're going to pick up Spellbinder on um, more of the pick-oriented champions. Some TF, some Elise, things like this. Riley is AP up. Medjai's stack for move speed is down, so this increases snowball ability. This is pretty important for Medjai's builders. Luden's cost down. Um, mana up, so this is pretty much the same thing. Turrets. Turrets now take more damage from 50 to 60%. Basic attack uses AP bonus to deal turret. The, the whole attack will convert to magic damage rather than only the AP power scale portion. Sort of means that if you're hitting mid turret, it's going to go down faster. It's going to go down faster. If you're Talia going bottom, that turret's going to go down faster. So in general, bot turret's going to die quicker, top turret's going to die quicker, and uh, swaps are going to occur a little bit quicker. So tempo is more important. Um, playing defensive or knowing that their mid laner can roam. That early on doesn't really change anything because your mid laner probably can't move if they're behind. And here we have a bunch of champion moves. Like the mana regen is up like to oh, it was 6 for 5. So like this is making up for the D ring changes. The mana growth is down, but the base mana is up. In general, it looks like mana growth is generally down per level and base mana is up. So what that typically means is level 1 is your strongest point. Level 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, blah, blah, blah. Your mana growths are going to be halved while your base mana is going to be up. So this means you, that you probably can't spam as much. I don't know, like, let's look at Lissandra, for example, right? We're getting two more per five seconds. We're getting up 95, but we're getting down 30 per level, right? So at level four, this is breaking even roughly, because if you're getting 95 mana here and you're losing 30 per level, at level four, you're going to be about even, and then the mana region is going to be better. So basically, you're getting more stats, level one, two, three, four, uh, you're breaking even ish at five, and then you have to make use of your mana region stat at five. So probably at level five, you would have already base one time. Maybe you're close to basing. Um, in general, mana isn't really an issue that much post nine. So you're gonna have some issues from level five to level nine. That being said, probably get past your first blue often enough at level five, level six. Um, so it really shouldn't be that big of an issue in Korea. Um, and China, um, but in regions like Oceania, uh, NAEU, you're probably going to run into issues when someone takes your blue, when, when the jungler retakes the blue. Like It's just such a dominating mana lead that's going to occur if you don't get the second blue. That being said, there are some champions that can play around it. Obviously, Xerath can play around it, you know, things like this. You can play around it by how you expend mana. Amumu, cost down, this is still a meme. Caitlyn, uh, damage to non-champions is down. Relining formula, so headshot damage to decrease ability. Yeah, so headshot damage against minions is down, that's good. Because Caitlyn was probably the most impressive planer. Mundo, max health up. I don't think this was really necessary. One, Mundo has so many other reasons. Like, Mundo can be picked right now, right? Mundo fits the role of a semi-bruiser tank um, that you can pick in the top lane and definitely plays in solo queue a little bit. Um, you're definitely healing enough in solo queue, so... Uh, so we'll see how he picks up in competitive, but I think in general this was unnecessary. Garen, Q, damage increase, W increase. Okay, Garen's still Garen. Aurelia, now also refreshes duration when attacking large monsters. Um, okay. Sure. Passive, down, mature time. Interesting. The mature time later is, like, really short. Instead of one state maturation time. So this looks like a buff in general. This is going to scale through a little bit better. So Ivern's uh, going to be buffed in the passive clear ability. So that's pretty good. And then the Q width is increased. So that's pretty good for Ivern. Ivern is a situational pick because you have to not get pressed on by the other jungler, which basically means you have to have uh, lanes that can turn. You have to have a strong bottom lane and probably a strong top and mid lane to be able to do certain invades. So Ivern's like a pick that you can have when already winning. 
or you're conceding the jungle for whatever reason, going for um, sort of a cross map structure play. Um, that being said, if you're picking Ivern in those spots, then this doesn't really change that much, except being able to clear the camps that you're stealing from and making it a little bit better. So Ivern's relatively in the same state, but this is actually pretty helpful. Kaisa of off Q down, E Supercharge down, okay, that's good. Kaisa's probably scaling a little too hard. Null Sphere shield up. Okay. Kassa needs more help to get through the lane phase. I'm I mean I'm okay with that. But Kassan has such a strong mid and light that his lane phase should be weaker. W fifth hit. Um down early up late. Okay, fine. Kennan's mate part is his oppression. And he typically skills W, so you're gonna not break over on damage till level 3 W, which is at level 5. So the level 1 through 4 against Kenny's gonna be a bit easier. Uh, but the AD ratio is going up. So actually, it's roughly even. Because this is 5 damage off at level 1. And this is probably gonna make up for it. If you're building D Blade, D Blade's gonna give you 8. Um, so maybe. 70% of 8 is probably not enough. Yeah, so basically level 4 is going to be... Level 1 through 3 is going to be easier versus Cannon, which is good because Cannon's the lane oppressor. Um, well, I guess arguably bad for Cannon, but Cannon scales pretty well because um, of ult flash and all this stuff. So, yep. AP down. That's okay-ish. Uh, that kind of hurts the mid-game AP Cannon. Active base, there's so many component changes here. Active base damage is down. AP is up. Okay, so the fifth damage attack is going to do less, right? But you shouldn't be getting five hits on you anyway if you're against Cannon, so this doesn't matter as much. Um, the activation is going to do more damage, and it's going to, but you're going to lose the damage here. You're going to lose five here, 10 here, 15, 20. Um, and then they're going to try and make up for it over here and over here. So basically what this tells me is that AP Cannon is a lot stronger mid and late because of the uh, this ratio. Um, which makes that Wombo more important. And, but they're tuning down the 5th damage like here. This shouldn't really hit and this shouldn't really hit. Um, so it's really this versus this. So numbers are going up here and numbers are going up, uh, down here. So AD Cannon in late phase is going to be more oppressive at level 3 if you skill W at 3 or 4 because you're going to get more bonus AD on you and the AP damage is going to be on you. So actually lane phase is more oppressive um, when you activate the spell. Bec I mean, to be fair, the 5th auto doesn't go off often enough, right? Like this, this, this all shouldn't go off often enough. You should really only care about this as a change. And the AP ratio is up, it's going to do more damage, but it's going to decrease here. It's really hard to read this. Like, it, if you think that you're going to get 5th auto attack, then it's going to be stronger at level 4, because this number is bigger than this number. This number is bigger than this number. Um, if you don't think the 5th auto matters, then you're just going to be losing damage here and then pick up mid-game damage. So basically, they're toning down Kennen's early game, levels 1 through 4-ish, and they're turning up her mid-game a little bit. It? Her? She? It? Um, so yeah, that's going to be the case, which is fine. I guess Kennen was a bit oppressive. Uh, TP cooldown is really, really important. Kennen gains 30-70% attack speed for 4. Interesting. All right, so AD Cannon's a little bit better. Uh, AD can like the mid game cannon is better. I, this is a decent trade off, like giving up early game for mid game because you're already so strong in the early. You don't need to press that much, honestly. And Cannon, Cannon, I would I wouldn't be surprised if Cannon is repicked with these changes. W Eclipse, um, base damage is up. Okay, Leona Snowball is increased. Attack speed, attack speed, growth down. You don't really care about attack speed growth. Base attack speed is nice. Health growth, uh, you would like to have this. Binding is up, cooldown is down, cost is down, so this is pretty much a buff. W, always. Okay, buff, 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 nerf. Ooh, you're going to be hard to press a hit the entire E sometimes now. 
Uh, the missile speed is down, so that's a nerf. The cost is down, and the cooldown is down. So typically early on you needed two Qs anyway. So the fact that the cooldown is down means that your two Qs comes up earlier. And the mana is decreased, so it's actually above there. The missile speed, you... Typically, when you play against Lux and against an immobile champion, your E is always going to hit, so I wonder if this is going to change the situation to be able to get out of the circle sometimes now. Um, same way that, like, you know, Zareth W should always hit if you center it. Um, and the radius is down, so you're going to need to rotate the wave or move the wave around a little bit. So this is, a, this is interesting. This helps early game to get two E's off, but it, obviously this is more important late game. Um, and we get some buff numbers here under Q, which means her early mid-game catch is more important. In general, uh, it seems like an overall nerf situation. You can get more picks with Q, but um, if you're getting those angles, they're face shaking into you, so they're making a mistake. And the early game hurt is too much in this. This is way too important in the mid-game to not have like a wider field. So I think overall this is a nerf on Lux. Flat armor activation 20 to 30, okay. No speed down for Poppy. Uh, passive bonus up. Move speed down, 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 up. One second. So this is down, base damage down, charge speed is up. Okay, so basically, they're taking away a lot of our straight numbers, right? Her move speed number, her W numbers is down. You don't really, like, you like all this stuff. The move speed is really important. More important than the base resist. But that's not why you care about the W, in all honesty. Like, Poppy in the current lane situation, you can win certain matchups. So this is going to turn into a situation where you're going to start losing some of those matchups because you don't have as many resists. The trade-off is more utility in the mid game. Uh, the passive autos. Like, maybe this turns her into a lane harasser, honestly. Because this is a lot of range. And the mid-game E-charge, like your mid-game is going to, your mid-game utility is stronger. Because the missile speed is probably more important than the extra duration of knockup, arguably. So your utility is better, but you're giving up some of your lane phase. Um, I can't really think about the poppy lane phase because I haven't seen that much of it. But overall, I feel like poppy is a pick that uh, you can pick into tanks. Um, because those are pretty much auto-win matchups and you're picking it into bruiser matchups, then this is mostly going to be the situation. You're already going to be losing to things like Jason Cannon and Nara anyway. So this like this helps survive against them, but you're going to be losing. So basically, like, can this does this make the difference in an Aurelia or Riven or something like that matchup? Maybe. Shivana, this is gone. Okay, good. Uh, gone. Okay. AP, whatever. Whatever. Cord. Core damage is up, base damage is up, her lane harasses more. Um, so Sona I felt like was already really strong in the lane phase if she didn't die. That being said, Sona is a pick that can be punished against like all inners like Braum and Thresh and things like this. So in general, it's going to make the lanes that she won wins, wins more, win more, and she's going to lose against the people in the same amount. Maybe she'll kill someone sometimes. In general, her damage doesn't matter that much until she picks up some AP after her tier into Archangel situation. Um, so overall, Sona's a little bit better. Uh, I don't think this really changes that much though. It, it like makes snowballing with her a little more easier. Um, this is 15% more damage to turrets. Okay, so Syndra skills better. Um, Talon fix the bug where her range, his range is increased. So good. Her bug fix. 80 down. Numbers down. Okay, work was pretty strong and impressive in early dueling because of healing. Base damage of E up, okay, you only really use E to clear out waves when you're basing early on and in the mid game. So this shouldn't change six that much, honestly. Fixed a bug. Okay, so Ginsu's is down. Baron base damage is less, but health is up. Corruption 30 plus 5%. 120 plus 7. All right, so basically, base damage is down, corruption damage is up, and corruption is the person with the lowest stacks around him. So basically, the Baron AoE is more important, and the like the autos of 
Baron are down. So that means everyone has to be a little bit more careful when they're doing Baron. Um, this is pretty interesting. It might make Baron harder to take. It might not, depending on how much the corruption matters. Obviously, the base health up makes it means it takes longer to take for sure. So that so Baron should be harder to. Baron will take longer to take, but I'm not necessarily sure if it'll be harder to take because we don't know if this does more damage or this does more damage. So we're Riff Herald, 25%. Um, 150 plus 25% current health. So the damage is down. 40% current or 50. On turret charge. Oh, so this is just the damage itself, which we don't really care about. So this means that the turret take is going to be increased. So 40% of current health or 1500, whichever one is greater. So turrets, I believe, have like 3750 health, I believe. Um, so it's going to be whichever one is larger. Eye damage. 20% max health, 40% max health. Okay, so Herald is really easy to kill. Turret kills it. Auto attacks on Herald kill it. But it should take towers more quickly. I'm okay with that trade. Until it's Spellbook. So I'll probably equip the summoner spells to new single use summoner spell. After using the single use your originals. Okay. Interesting. First swap available at six minutes. Swap cool then four minutes permanently reduced by fifteen seconds. Every time you swap the summer spell you haven't swapped yet. So you wanna continuously swap. So I'll continue cooling down in the background while swapped out. Swap your summoner spell on your app so long as you're out of combat. That's pretty strong. This is the most important part, I think. Tab while dead no longer prevents you from your opening until respawn. Okay, so basically, your first swap is available at 6 minutes. So we're looking at post 6 minute plays. So we're looking at like level 5, level 6. Where you can... Where if your summer spells on cooldown, you can just use something else on top of it. So if you're flashing on cooldown, you can replace it with ghost, blah, 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 TP, all this stuff. So that's pretty interesting. Um, you're looking at a lot of mid-game utility. Obviously, you're giving up the early game level uh, minutes 1 through 6 or 0 through 6 for additional utility in the, like, if you're someone that values all the spells. So TP, Flash, Ignite, Ghost, Barrier, Exhaust, Cleanse, Heal, like, mid laners are going to have a heyday. Maybe even AD carries are going to have a heyday. Just walk into lane and, and just, like, burn a spell. But the swap cooldown is four minutes, so you only really have a couple. So it's not really something that you can use pretty liberally, like 6, 14, re reduced by 15 seconds every time you swap. So you should swap to all of them, eventually have a three minute cooldown. Um, you're going to have a lot of utility coming out from this, probably from the mid lane mostly, and maybe the support lane to use all the spells. Some Tom Kench ability. Like, I think this is really interesting. I really want to see how this pans out because. This means that the enemy team has to keep be track, keeping track of when you use spells very, very frequently and when you can swap, right? Like, timing out the four minutes after to know that you can have Ghost Up is really, really important later on. Crystal is Crystal is that after then, no universal health. Okay, bug fix, bug fix, and bug fixes. All right, so basically going over it. Um, mages, levels... 5 through 8 are the same if you get blue and are worse if you don't. Um, other than that, men doesn't really matter. Lost chapter is nerfed. Tears nerfed, which means um, both all these mana situations are like Rise has to adapt, uh, Ezreal has to adapt. And then GLP, I hope, is picked up more. Um, Talia, or uh, TF and Elise buff, uh, Snowball buff, so like if you're ballsy enough to go Soul Stealer, the move speed buff. So basically, a lot of snowballing mages buffed, a lot of pick snowballing mages buffed. Um, snowball ability buff because turrets get taken out faster. Um, Caitlyn healing nerfed, but she's still lane oppressor, so it doesn't change anything. I don't think this is necessary. It's strong, still good. Ivern pretty much the same. 
but this is pretty good if you can do it in competitive. I don't think Ivern works well enough for solo queue. Um, nerf, uh, I don't think this is necessary. Cannon should see play again anyway, but yeah, Snowball. Lux is pretty nerfed. Poppy might have mid-game utility. Uh, Sona snowballs a little bit more. Syndra is better. Myth Light, Talon snowballs a little bit more. Uh, Warwick snowballs a little bit less. Uh, Jin is well, Jin is a lot worse. Baron is a lot a little slower. So a lot of the early game snowball is made up for the fact that Baron is slower. Harold snowballs the early game more. So really interesting that Baron is the only thing that really slows the game down. Um, swap this obviously speeds the game up and is really interesting. So in general, we're making the game faster except for Baron, with a lot of these things having more snowball ability, except like Kassin getting out of lane and things like this. So yep, that's going to be patch 8.6. Thank you guys for tuning in.